Next up, we'll talk about tables. This starts about page 293 of your text. Here we see a very simple table with some basic formatting having been applied. And there's different parts here that some folks are aware of, others aren't. At the top here we have a caption, and we saw a caption a moment ago with image. Uh, so the same applies here with tables, uh, with the fig and uh, caption. And then we have a header here. Down below the header, we have a footer. And in between the two, we have the body. Uh, tables will always have this. And again, it's the forgiving nature of browsers that's forced, or I should say allowed, developers to avoid some of these tags uh, when, when they typically are needed and added for you even if you omit them. Here are the most common elements that developers use when working with tables. Use table to both start and end a table and then you put a bunch of table rows inside the table and within the table rows uh, you put table heading or table data elements. This is a typical table that somebody would write uh, so we have the table, and then we have table row, and then one, two, three table headings, end the row, start the next row, one, two, three, and so on. These classes here used to be very common, and uh, CSS3 is helping with that, as we'll see in a moment. But uh, this is the way you would align the first column. So the way that the HTML is laid out and the way the page renders is sometimes a little hard to wrap your head around. But this is the first column, this is the first column, and so on. And then you get down here to the very uh, end, they give this one the ID uh, total. So this would be your uh, footer, basically, and again, left aligned. You load that up into a browser. I'm sorry, this is the table with no formatting. Okay. Um, Tables ha have some annoying things with them. Uh, going back to the early days of HTML and some weird defaults that someone decided upon, starting with border collapse, um, you'll still see some folks include border collapse equals zero in their table markup. And that comes from, and it continues today to be a result of the transition from older to newer, more modern browsers. Uh, border collapse, uh, was a, and by the way, these are all CSS properties. Border collapse was also an HTML uh, attribute. And, you know, now you can set it with CSS as long as it's a modern browser. Most of the folks here have modern browsers. But uh, in the past, border collapse was an HTML attribute. And when you define the CSS, it would simply ignore it. So that's why you may see it in both places still. But what it really is, skip ahead a little bit, is this uh, separation between cells. And for some reason, they chose a default of separate rather than collapse. Uh, border spacing then defined the amount of space that you would find between the cells. And um, again, very annoying, these two attributes. So they're typically the first things that developers turn off. They which border collapse to collapse, and uh, don't have to worry about border spacing then. Uh, padding allows you to uh, add space between the cell contents and the uh, outer edge. And then, of course, we have text align and vertical align, which we're familiar with. That's just how the text will be inside the table data or table heading elements. Here's what some CSS, modern CSS, would look like styling up a table. Targeting the border, giving us just a thin line between cells. Border collapse, we want to make sure to collapse it so it doesn't look terrible. Uh, targeting table heading and table data elements. Setting border, uh, again, this is the outside of the table all around the edge. This is the inside. Then we have padding, text align. Uh, and here's where we're targeting that left class and aligning the text to left. And finally, at the very bottom, that last row, we set the font weight to bold. 
render that in a browser and we get something like this. We're getting better here, especially from this. Um, but we do have these other uh, elements and you'll see this when, when you load a table where in the HTML it doesn't have tbody. Uh, the browser is going to add it for you. And that's, that's kind of weird. So you want to include it if you can remember uh, just, just to help let yourself know, remind yourself that, that it is there. Because when you're styling uh, or writing rules, hierarchical rules to traverse the DOM, uh, you need to remember that. So we have uh, T head, T body, and T foot. And the way these usually work, right inside the table header, if, if the top is the table header, then uh, you'll open that up and there's usually a single row of all the T heading elements, uh, table heading elements. So you can throw that in there, then start your body and add as many rows as you want with table data elements. And finally, uh, end your table with a footer. Again, usually it's a single row with this is using one table heading and then some table data elements. Once you use that, you can change your CSS around and a bit easier target what you're trying to do. Target the table heading and footer separately as well as the, the body. Now this one comes out looking like this. But things get even better when you realize uh, in CSS3 we have these pseudo class selectors. The author um, calls these uh, structural pseudo class selectors. And these are kind of complex when you first read them. I think the, the first two are a little bit easier to understand. Um, you have to think the, the value of n is replaced by either even or odd or some actual numeric value like 1, 2n, 3n. Uh, there's an offset here uh, that you can use in specifying this. But the way it would work, um, you, you know, removing those classes for the left aligning and the bottom rows and all that kind of stuff is more along these lines. So targeting uh, table headings, but you're saying you want the first child. So you're selecting table headings, and relative to the parent of the table heading, you're saying you want the first child. So that's going to get the first table heading uh, within a set of siblings. And then here, we're doing the same with table data. Uh, so that'll left align our first column. Uh, down here, a little bit more complex. First child just gets the first one. Uh, nth child, you specify the number. You could say nth child one, and that would be the same as first child. But here, counting up from one, we're going to two. That's the second column. But we're doing the same thing. We're centering the second column. Um, here's a bit more complex. We're starting with T body, which means we're eliminating the header and the footer. And we're saying, start at the T body and then give me the table rows. And uh, you know, relative to the table body, the container, give me the nth child. And I want all the even rows. Now, this is neat because in the past, you had to add even and odd classes or at least one or the other to your, to your tables uh, to do this kind of thing. Now you can do it with pure CSS which makes for a lot cleaner HTML. 